Hello and welcome back. Today we'll be going over what we actually want to make from the prototype that we plan on making for the Tower Defense series. This will give us a good direction and a good starting point. Now I created this fun little visual aid to like using Obsidian to actually show off the rough plan and the ideas that we'll be covering just with the prototype alone. Now this is kind of something I do with all of the games that I like to design where it's like start off with a small prototype, see how I feel about it, and the prototype, if I don't like the prototype, I can scrap it and move on, or if I do like the prototype, I know where I want to go. So, uh, to get this out of the way, I understand that a lot of these starting videos will be a bit short, and a lot of it's the really boring stuff of like, you know, set up and planning, but it's also really important. Rough plans can give a really good direction and help you kind of not get lost in the code as you uh, slowly move forward. So we'll be dedicating a video to just that, and we'll be dedicating a, video, a couple more videos in the future to just some of the more simple stuff that is just really useful to learn. But let's look at this Obsidian little visual aid I have here. So I'm going to just uh, zoom in, and we're going to first go over the gameplay loop. So this is going to be the general loop of the tower defense game. Now this is, you know, if you look at any tower defense game, this is kind of the rough loop anyway, where you... You, know, you click start, you get into the game, you're buying, you place your towers, you then start your wave, or a wave starts across the timer. You beat the enemies, you get your currency or your building materials, your wave ends, you then buy and place towers, and you just kind of go through that gameplay loop, and you kind of expand and expand and expand until you either beat X amount of waves and beat a boss, or until the level is done, or until you just can't go on any longer. So that's going to be our kind of rough loop. Now, we're going to more or less be ignoring the start and we're going to be just be starting with the buying and placing of towers, more specifically the placing of towers, then starting a wave, beating an enemy, ending the wave, and then placing more towers. Just getting those ideas down first as core mechanics is just really good. Learning core mechanics is also a really useful thing. That's kind of why prototypes are so amazing. You can just build out the base mechanics of your game before you start kind of implementing more complex things. Speaking of mechanics, let's scroll down a little bit. And these are the mechanics that we will be focusing on. First one will be, or first couple will be tower placement and tile, or tile highlighting. So, you know, you're going to want to show where you can place the uh, tower and if you can place the tower or not. And then we're going to actually want to be able to place the tower, which can be handled in a few different ways. We're going to be using a tile based placement for this. Uh, next thing will be uh, like tile data handling. Does the tile have tower on it or is the tile actually buildable or not? After that, we've got enemy spawning. So we're going to be spawning in some enemies from kind of a set point. After that, we're going to be working on their pathfinding. So they can go from their set spawn point all the way down to, you know, the your player's main base and do some damage, which is where the health system is going to come in. Now, we're going to be working on a small drop system just for some like currency drops, basically. Uh, then, yeah, health system for the base and the uh, monsters or creatures that the player's going to have to beat. And then some basic wave management. And finally, topping it off with just the currency storing system. Just getting these kind of handled and out of the way means we have the very, very base foundations of the tower defense game we want to make. And these are very, very important and key things to do. Now, you'll notice here that I haven't mentioned different types of enemies, different types of towers. That is something that will be more after the prototype. So after we've got the core foundation in, we're going to come back and we're going to rework and refactor some code in a lot of places. And we're going to make it so it's a lot more expandable and turn it into an actual game. That's when we're going to go into uh, resource management, actually using some ref counted objects and actual you know tower defense stuff rather than just prototyping but keep going back to the prototype this is basic stuff that we're going to be needing now i'm going to move these up a little bit that did not work how i wanted it to can i just do this and yeah i can there we go so this is stuff that our towers are going to need right our towers are going to need a tower type targeting component and a shooting component. And now components are something we'll get into more after we've done the prototyping. A lot of this is going to be handled just within one script for now. But you know, this is what towers need to do. They need to be able to target an enemy, figure out which enemy they want to target, and then shoot the enemy. And then the enemies are going to need to be able to move, take damage, and drop something. 
And then we're just going to need a couple of little managers to help us kind of manage the game itself, where whether it's uh, storing and you know relaying the amount of currency the player has, actually helping us build I or build towers in a very uh, we give it the information, it does the thing for us. Managing projectiles so we don't have to rewrite projectile code all the time. And finally, managing the enemies, how many are left, how many uh, need to be spawned and things like that. Now, of course, there will be a wave manager added onto this at some point as well, which will handle the types, the difficulty scaling and things like that. That is more or less what we're going to be going for just in the prototype alone. Now, the prototype will last... A good like maybe 10 15 videos depending on how kind of how well it goes and how smoothly we can kind of whack it out uh but that is the prototype this is what we will be working on uh if you have any questions or anything along those lines there will be a link to the to, well, to my discord in the description you can come and ask some questions there or you can just leave some comments i hope you're excited i hope this hasn't bored you to death but i have yeah uh i will see you in the next video where we actually start working on some stuff actually in Godot. So thank you for watching. I hope you're having a great day and a great game dev journey, and I will see you then.